Remember when I lied to my mom about my IB score? And she cried. <laughs> Sorry, why? My brother is so naughty. <laughs> Welcome to the best late night show. Um, before you came, I was doing a short introduction about the three of you. But then, the introduction was really short. Today our shoot, right? Our guest is quite amazing. It's a trio. We have invited. Ouch! The cross siblings. <laughs> and, and that was it. That was it. And it was just maybe me panicking a little bit, but like. Whew, they are swimmers and I can't swim and I just thought the whole irony of it is quite <laughs> <laughs> hilarious. Okay, but anyway, before we start, maybe you can just get each of you to introduce yourselves, starting from the youngest. Um, uh, I'm Ting Wen and I'm the youngest of the Kwa siblings. Yes. Yeah. Okay, can you give us like a unknown fact about yourself or maybe an assumption that you think people have about you that is not you? Oh, an assumption. I feel like my life is quite out, like, out there already because I have like TikTok and I like to post on there as well. I used to say like, oh, something that people wouldn't assume about me is that I like going to the gym, but then mm. I started posting my gym on, yes. on TikTok. So like, I think everyone just knows me like for that. Um, but I think something that people would assume about me because I post so much um, flexing and all that, right? They would assume that I'm very confident. But when they meet me, they're like, oh yeah, actually like a lot more like reserved and like chill than what they expected. Yeah, then I was like, uh, I, I mean like it's not a compliment or like a negative thing. I'm just like it's quite interesting because mm. yeah. I think once you get to know me, then I'll be like, you know, the, the real, oh, yeah? the more okay. the more like TikTok personality okay, okay. I guess. But I've, I have two sides to me. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep some questions that I already have. But okay. 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 <laughs> uh, so I'm Tsung Wen. I'm the middle child. No middle child syndrome. Don't worry. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. Uh, I guess an unknown fact that people don't really know about me is. I'm nicer than I look, I guess. But like, I mean, I don't know, kids always tell me that they find me unapproachable because I'm always walking around like all serious, but actually if they just come and talk to me, I'm more than happy to talk to them, but they always just end up being scared for some reason. Uh, it's yeah. the RBF. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm just I like, know. <laughs> I think all of you have a bit oh, of that. Yeah, yes. we've been told like we are we look unapproachable. We're not yeah. blessed with the easy looks. Yeah. I think out of all three of you, you have the most approachable face already. Really? Huh? I was oh, gonna really? say it's the opposite, <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, I thought you I was gonna, I say, you were gonna say like she has the okay, not she okay, has then, the, then, like, then the then scariest one. Order now. So then who's next? Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, like it'll be you, lah. <laughs> right? No, I mean, then after that, who? No, but yeah. Who is basically like, on your opinion, opinion, on your okay, the most unapproachable, I think. Oh, uh, okay, okay, see. Okay, yeah, but I'll say. Is you prove the fact, your fact. Yeah, okay, yeah, I, I did prove the fact, fact but yeah. I have like the same face. <laughs> so the fact that she's saying Maybe that is now like. She's just it's all like, placebo, you know what I mean? Now she like up turns her mouth more naturally. <laughs> Tete? Now she's like. <laughs> yeah, I feel like yeah. she's so okay. smiling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's right. I <laughs> that's actually funny that you said that. Um, Hi, my name is Ting Wen. I was actually gonna say exactly what my brother just said. A lot of uh, uh, something that people assume about me is that I'm very serious. Um, I, I, they think that I'm very. I think it's because of the RBF. I agree. Like I think when we don't smile, we tend to look very serious. We tend to look a bit scary. And most of the time, when people see us, it's in a swimming setting where we are very focused and stuff, right? So, but I guess if you get to know me better. Um, I actually do like to joke around and you know I train with a lot of young kids like my sister's eight years younger than me so I, know, right? I think that keeps me very young like if my my friends who are around my age should be talking about like oh what's this new lingo on TikTok I don't get it I'll know right away because I already <laughs> oh my, my sisters like introduced yeah. me to you know, the kids <laughs> at the pool so um, I think that kind of helps to keep me like young in a way and so I think once you get to know me better I, I do I am like sort of the joker in like the, my group of friends I like to mm. laugh a lot um, I like to make my friends laugh if I can so I think that's something that people don't know a lot about me but I, I, I didn't know I didn't know that either oh you didn't know that <laughs> <laughs> okay like the dynamic in the friend group thing, yeah, yeah. I, I never know. really thought about it to be fair yeah so, yeah. so what, why am I in a friend group I didn't think about it I, no okay I should do it no I don't think about it but, but if I, I imagine yeah. I'll just imagine you guys are just like 
demi old woman. Like, <laughs> like, so like, like bore, talking about serious things. Like boring, you know, like, boring adults. No, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but I guess really, it makes I, sense. Like, I, I imagine you more as like, like the listener. Oh yeah, I am yeah. that sometimes. Yeah. I could yeah. tell. I know earlier on you were saying that sometimes, right, the model that you guys were growing up in were quite similar. Like, first it would be you, and then after that, model it for you, and then for you. But together, how did that feel like? Um, okay, I guess I'll go since I'm in the middle. Yeah, they're just looking at you. How is it growing up together? Uh, I'm not sure. I think I've always, I've kind of felt like equally close to both of them because I'm in age quite close as well, like, you know, four years, four years. Um, so I, I don't know, I've always been able to bond with both of them very well and I, it's always been a very close-knit type of uh, deal with us. And I mean, not to make it about swimming and everything again, but you know, I mean, she was at the pool so much and eventually we just got into it because we were just there so often and I think that brought us closer together as well. So I think just with us being able to get along um, as people, being having those common goals in swimming and uh, enjoying it, I think kind of brought us even closer together and made it easier uh, growing up together just because, you know, we weren't just like all over the place doing our own thing. We were all kind of doing the same thing. And along with that, uh, as individuals, we also got along well at home. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, yeah, and honestly, when I think about it, I would just have to say that. Um, it was smooth and it, we were close for the most part and I, I mean until she left when she was like 17 for school. Yeah. I think it's so hard to describe it to people um, like just how close we are and to this day I still can't even though it's always a question that's asked I think quite commonly in interviews um, and they're, even my friends they're like how are you so close to your brother who's four years older than you and your sister who's like eight years like that's eight years you know and sometimes I'm like Oh yeah, damn! Like she is eight years older than me, and I don't it, realize. Yeah, I don't realize it at all, and I think that's such a special thing. And I've just grown up with that sort of bond. That I don't realize that it's quite rare to find like three siblings with that age gap um, to be this close. So, wow. yeah. Even with siblings with like lower age gaps, like you've come across, and they also ask the same thing, like, yeah. "Oh, how are you?" So close to your siblings, and I, yeah, I, uh, like she said, I never thought about it because I always just thought it was normal, yeah. and I was like, I couldn't honestly imagine it in any other way. So I have, I have no idea how to answer that question. <laughs> I mean, I think my my brother's right. Last swimming has definitely um, really factored into like why one of it's one of the, a huge reason why we're so close. Like we do the same things, we go through. It's like one extra thing to talk about, right? To share an experience with. Um, to understand even more than our parents might understand like what we're going through like we have one another so it's like they understand me as a swimmer what I go through in, in the pool but they also understand me as like a sibling and a family member so then you combine both of that and it's like it's like something completely different that you can't find with just your teammates or like just your family members so I think that is one of the contributing factors as to why we're so close and I think another reason is also the way we were raised by our parents like I think my dad has always really tried to maintain this like strong family bond and it, it, it's not even through words right it's through example like my dad would do anything for his family and growing up watching that like i feel like we have we've just started to kind of follow in his footsteps and as the oldest like i've i was brought up to nurture and take care of my siblings and, and always make sure that they're okay. Um, and so that kind of, yeah, that kind of fostered like the relationship that I have with the two of them. And like I said, like having my sister being eight years younger than me, like she keeps me young and like, like I said, like I like to joke around and I think then she, she kind of forgets that I am actually like almost a full decade older than her. So we can joke around about like similar things and now that she's in her 20s, we can talk about similar like live stage stuff in a way different from when she was 12 and i was 20 you know mm. yeah. yeah actually that, right? that's what it stuck yeah. right now that you're hearing the yeah. age you're like yeah, yeah. no because I, I was just trying to do the, like the math right and then i was like okay technically when you're in secondary school 
then you're in primary school and then you're not even in primary school yet like mm-hmm. the the stages that you guys go to are actually quite different but yeah at the same time there's the shared experience that kind of like connects you guys back mm-hmm. together and I think that that really comes out lah and as to how they are so close I think if they see this interview and your interactions earlier on I think that's quite obvious <laughs> alright it's quite obvious don't worry no I don't think anyone will doubt that <laughs> So, just uh, wondering, so among the three of you, do you guys fight at all or like argue? Considering your wonderful sibling relationship, has there been any? Yeah, oh, of course. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for With sure. every healthy relationship, <laughs> there will be many fights. <laughs> yeah. Any um, big fights that you kind of like remember? Honestly, um, I would say um, not particularly. I think what well, I would hope, I would like to believe that we are quite good at letting water flow under the bridge, mm. you know, when it's over. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's nothing been like devastating, at least for me personally, that uh, that sticks out in my mind and I will hold on to you forever, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know, maybe that's just me. Maybe the girls have a different answer. But I, I, I think personally, I'm more easygoing, so maybe I think that's why it's an easy one right. for me to answer. Where I just, at the end of the day, like, we are still siblings no matter what. And, um, yeah, no matter how bad the fight can get. You uh, could always do yeah. that. Yeah. And, like, we'll always be there for each other, and that's all that really matters. True. I was gonna say, like, uh, nothing really, like, nothing stands out to me mm. at all. Like, sometimes, I wouldn't even consider it fights. Like, it's so petty sometimes that it's just, it's not even a fight, it's just petty matters that, like, we... We kind of have, um, cause we're all very strong-headed people, hard-headed people as well, um, stubborn. Uh, some would like to say that I am, but they are also stubborn. Uh. I, I would say I'm the most stubborn. But okay, yes. Um, so in, in that sense, that like combination just sometimes there's a li- little bit of friction. Mm. But yeah. And it yeah. comes with like being so close together too, as like yeah. we were just saying too. You know, in, in, inevitably we're not clones of each other, so there will definitely be differences and. Yeah, like she said, friction, we will rub against each other sometimes. Yeah. yeah, we are all very stubborn. We are very, we hold on to our values and beliefs mm-hmm. very strongly. Um, and we like to fight for those values to the end uh, if we believe that those are correct. Um, I mean, it's funny, right? The people that you're closest to, you know them so well, you also know like exactly like what would hurt them. Mm-hmm which is, I've always thought was quite interesting. Um, for me, I realised that, some, for me growing up, I think I almost had like the third parent mentality sometimes, which I've learned to let go of now that I'm a bit older and they're also older and more independent. But I would try and be like, I'll be super protective of them, overly protective, and sometimes like that will come off the wrong way. And I think like that, for me, like, I feel like that's why I would, that would be the reasons why I would start arguing with them like over certain things mm-hmm. um, but now that they're older and like they've proved more than you know enough that they are capable of taking care of themselves it's been easier for me to take a step back be just like their sister and if they need my help like they know that I'm there like there's no need to kind of like helicopter and like make sure like oh are you safe like do you fall down or just stuff like that right but um, and also I think them growing up like we have definitely become better at communicating and understanding context also right sometimes we are super tired after training you know like eight nine times a week on saturdays we're sleep deprived tired um haven't eaten yet so getting hangry you know so sometimes understanding the context also taking a step back just being a little bit more patient with one another and like taking it slower sometimes doing things so fast in the pool all the time it's like this that this that and sometimes like we get very quick to like jump into arguments also but I think we've been getting better at like taking a step back being like hold on like what like what's going on is something else wrong like why are you you know using that tone mm. kind of so I think we're getting better at that okay um so you were saying sometimes when it comes to um how the two of you are so close besides that shared experience you also say it's about like how you guys were brought up yeah, yeah. so maybe in line of that right um, how do you think like parents uh, actually play a role in this whole dynamic also? Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like when we were... 
<laughs> okay, nice. Now. Yeah. I feel like when we were growing up, I mean, they po- they are they don't even just play a role. They are like part of the dynamic. Mm. You know, they've always like brought us out. I guess they've given us the they put us in like the situations that allow us to grow together mm. and bond through like memories and like um, we go to the beach together, we play games and stuff like just staying home and everyone just doing their own stuff. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I I I guess they're just so part of. We're just like all so connected. Mm-hmm. I really don't know how to explain it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said before, my dad is a, a family man. Um, he tries to. My parents both try to be at every single competition that we compete at if they can. Um, my mom, you know, she stopped working when my brother was born to be at home more. Uh, not not just because we started swimming, but like she just wanted to be at home more with us and kind of. Um, be there with us mm-hmm. and I think yeah they've always encouraged like play they've always encouraged us to be outside with one another and I think the values that they've imparted on us like have really stuck with us and I think have really shaped us mm-hmm. um, as people and as siblings and yeah I think the way I the way I love other people I think I really model it after the way my parents have shown me love. Mm. Um, yeah, I yeah. I mean like we we very rarely talk about our parents like mm. together. We've done a few things where the topic of my parents would come up. But yeah, every time I actually like say it out loud, it it really is a reminder of like how much they've done for us and, mm. and how much they've yeah, and even with my dad working, he'll still try and be at home with us as much as possible. Like, he helps out with the laundry and the dishes. And, like, my brother said, like, he's a handyman. If he can fix it, he will try and fix it yeah. before, like, Can't asking someone else to come in to do it, right? It's always about kind of trying to be there for us. Yeah. So, my dad used to, all, like, says a lot that blood is always thick in the water. Like, mm-hmm. especially when I was growing up, I think. Um, I was kind of like a. Not like, okay, a menace, but like not that terrible, la, but that's the first <laughs> word that came to mind. I was kind of like a menace, sometimes I would like complain um, about my siblings or I don't know, just like those petty things that I mentioned before, right? And then my dad would be like, yeah, you can have these like complaints or like you might not like this, might not that, like that, but you know what? They're always going to have your back, like blood mm-hmm. sticking in water, like always. And they're just doing that because they care for you. They're never going to do anything that's like Malicious. out of malice, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and that's really stuck with me, yeah. Um, so, maybe for, with following that, right, then um, in terms of when you guys were pursuing this as like, not just an interest, but really as a career, or even putting this passion into work, right, how did they actually like support you besides, like maybe more on the mental support that they were providing for you guys? Uh, I actually think this is quite huge. Um, I think my pa- our parents just did like a really good job not emphasizing any pressure on us uh, and they just really supported that sports and academics were uh, he- held in equal regard, so mm-hmm. to speak. And as, I think that is especially difficult for uh, here, like to be seen here, mm-hmm. especially in Singapore, you know, it's so uh, competitive in the academic world. so. I think them just allowing us to kind of do both at the same time with the intensity that we wanted to apply Mm -hmm. to that was big because, um, I mean, you know, kids were just going to tuition and like staying back after school and doing all these kind of things. But like, you know, for us, it was a different story. You know, we have half the day to do school and then the rest of the day we're like swimming and all these kind of things. And by the time we got home, it's late. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, our parents did a lot for us. They supported us through all those years and like my mom basically like my sister said that was a housewife sorry that that was eluding me for a second so she just cooked like so much for us and she would drive everywhere ferry us all, all around and so those things i think uh were invaluable i think when um we were growing up and trying to do both at the same time mm-hmm. and uh yeah i think the pressure thing was a big one just with not having to stress out about exams and having to, you know, always get like flying colors, you know. Uh, 
So I, and my mom would just always say, you know, just do your best. Like, yeah. Just pass and like go to the next year and try hard, try hard again. <laughs> that was her favorite thing to say right before exams. Really? Just try yeah. your best. Yeah, just yeah. try your best. Like just do your best to pass. Really, and like I think yeah, the support and just making sure that we had as much of a childhood as possible yeah. growing up, making sure we had as little as possible to worry about, mm. um, which I know not everyone's as fortunate, you know, to mm. have. But I would say that it's like a huge thing, like the support as well as just allowing us to be kids for as long as possible. Remember when I lied to my mom about my IB score? And she cried. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, why? My brother is so naughty. <laughs> so I was in the car with my mom, like on the day my brother got like his um, IB results, like after year six of school, like basically like mm. J2, right? When they're 18. Yeah. And he hadn't done so good on his promos and my mom was very worried. And the, the max score you can get for IB is 45. Okay, yeah. And I, he had barely passed promos and my mom was just like sitting in a car like, I don't know if she was praying or what, but like <laughs> she was very quiet. And then my brother calls before he comes down. He's like, mom, I got my results. The, wait, this is the actual results? Yes, the actual yeah, results. The actual like the final like, thing, right? He's like, mom, I got my results. There's a three in it. <laughs> <laughs> then my mom started crying. She was like, she, with she, three, even, she didn't even like hit 40. And okay, then I was that, like, oh. Yeah, the context is, right, that uh, basically going from year 5 to year 6, I barely met the requirements to promote. I, I think I, me and a bunch of my teammates and athletes got like 20-something. And yeah, so fast forward promos, I, I tried really hard for promos. Like I studied super hard, I took time off from swim and everything, and I got like, 30, I think I got like 33 or something like that. And I, at that point, I had almost just given up already because I was like, you know, I tried so hard and I got like 33, so I was like, I'm just done. I don't, don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> So then, a good shot, uh. <laughs> yeah, so then, yeah, like my sister said, I, I was basically messing with my mom when I got my score and I thought, oh, there's a three in it. And, but I honestly think my mom was happy. No, she was, she started crying first oh. and then he was like, ha ha, just joking, <laughs> 43. <laughs> she didn't know whether to like, be, she actually cried even harder, but like, actually, of, I think for, I, like out of relief, I think. I think I told her the reverse was, I think I was like, oh, I got 34. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Oh. That's like just kidding, it's reverse. Then she was just like. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't even know what to say. That's funny. Okay. Oh, but actually, just now you said something about how you guys were pursuing both academics and sports, like equally at the same time and with both intensity. So, was it? So, your parents didn't give you any pressure, but while the three of you were pursuing all of these things together, right? Do you have any like pressure that you put on yourself with that? Like, yeah. And was there any pressure that came with all these things that maybe not your parents, but external pressure that came? I think when I was younger, no, it was kind of like a thing where I was like, oh, I, I kind of enjoy this and I like my friends, so mm. I'll just keep showing up to training. And then we'll get to, I'll get to competition, I'll be like, oh, actually, like, I love racing and like, obviously I love winning. But um, with our parents, again, it was kind of like a thing where, um, they will look at me and be like, this, if this is your passion, this is what you love, like, mm. keep doing what you're doing. But if, if you don't want to do it, you can just stop. Like, right. we'll support you no matter what. So, I mean, 20 years later, then here I am, and I'm still doing it. And regarding pressure, I think it might be different for me compared mm. to maybe my older siblings because, um, like, say when I was 12, my brother um, would have turned 16 and my sister would be 20, and they were very accomplished mm. swimmers at that point. I think 2016, uh, my brother already <laughs> made you, like you know? 2012 um, <laughs> Olympics and he made the 2016 Rio Olympics as well. Mm. Wait, no. Yeah, no, yeah really, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> and then, so yeah, th there was a lot of external pressure where people would always come up to me and they would be like, oh, you're going to be just like your sister when you grow up. Like, you're going to do sub two minute, 200 free, blah, blah, blah. And I guess that was kind of pressure, mm. but I did, the way that I received it, it was kind of like motivation to me to kind of, yes, get to my sister's level, but also make a name for myself and mm. maybe do my own thing. And um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say it was stress in a bad way. It was more like motivation, mm. yeah. In terms of pressure, no one's gonna apply as much pressure on us as we do on ourselves. Mm. So in reality, any kind of expectation or pressure that anyone else places on us pales in what we feel. So it really doesn't feel like much at all or anything. Mm -hmm. 
So one of the questions that we actually had, right, when we were looking up like information on the three of you, we noticed that the three of you actually specialize in butterfly stroke. Yeah. So actually, how did that come to be? Or is there like any thought behind it? Or you're just so good at it, and just <laughs> happen three of you are just so good at it? Or oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, destroying the place, the guys. Butterfly. Okay, I'll go. First. <laughs> yeah. My answer is very easy. So, I think when I was swimming and getting better at swimming, uh, I was also on the smaller side of the spectrum for all the kids my age. So I tended, I tend to do more of the longer distance events and uh, harder ones at that where there are less people because it's mm-hmm. less quote unquote competitive. For example, if you do a fifty freestyle, um, everyone, yeah, can a- any, anyone can do that. You know, well, and maybe. so it. Yeah, there's going to be like hundreds of guys doing that. So, so things that I grew up focusing more on and doing is like things like 400 IM, mm. uh, the 1005, 200 butterfly, 200 backstroke, these kinds of things. Right. And uh, okay, it's widely debated, but 200 fly is one of the harder events to do. Uh, and in that reason, um, there's more skill gap, I would say. There's more, there's, the field is wider mm. and it's easier to get into it if you are willing to just do the work you do the work and endure right. like that painful event you know <laughs> so i think for me personally that's why i started doing fly more it's just because i was training for the 200 fly mm. and i think over the years it's just kind of developed and dropped down a bit to now i'm swimming more of the 100 fly and like a bit of backstroke here and there mm. but i think for her it might be a more interesting uh, history really? i'm not sure I mean, same thing, like I, like my brother I was a bit more, not so much on a smaller, like I was tall like for my age, but I was very skinny, very like scrawny. So I did a lot of the distance events, same thing, 1500 freestyle, 400 IM, 200 fly. I think when you do the, the, the individual medley, you have to do all four strokes mm. in one event. And I think from doing that event so much, I kind of realised that my butterfly and my freestyle were better. Mm. Backstroke was kind of meh and breaststroke I was terrible at. So I was like, okay, like as I got older and started to specialize right. um, on my events, I was like, forget breaststroke. Backstroke, we'll see, but like mainly just, I did, did mainly freestyle and butterfly. Mm. So I think, I, I feel like it might be a co- coincidence like why we all ended up like enjoying the butterfly event and all being good at it. Um, but the two of them, like they are very good, like they are very good at the butterfly kick. Like they are, mm. they are just very strong in that. And I don't know if it's like the genes yeah, or I'm what. Yeah, I don't say genetics <laughs> or <laughs> yeah. genetics. Coincidence, I see. Yeah, mm. coincidence. Yeah, we just like torturing ourselves, choosing the hardest events. Mm. Who is most likely to cry during a comedy? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have an answer but I, I know why I'm going to say Okay, then let's just okay. go okay. straight Alright, 3, 2, 1 Is it the Lego oh, yeah. movie? Yeah. <laughs> okay, <what? laughs> My brother watched the, the Lego movie The first one oh. on the aeroplane And he said he was like crying <laughs> Like straight crying Not just like one tear on there, right? Just, like, like, I had like mucus and everything Yeah, and he like, had to borrow mm. tissue and be like <laughs> I was pretty sure I was with the, with the team also, so I yeah. had to like, I had to really like dumb it down, because I was like, oh, my teammate sees me watching this, and then I'm just like crying and like. Yeah. Oh my god! I no don't sense. know why I have not watched it yet. Do you want to say why? Like, you haven't watched the Lego movie? No. Wait, you one. watched it? Yeah. Why would you watch it? I don't know. I think I was a kid then. Like I was it, literally you were not very young. It was a few years ago. No, yeah, it wasn't a few I years ago. No, it was like, like literally probably 2016, 20 uh, and under. Oh okay. okay. Yeah, okay. Fact that. Well, fact check that. Yeah, but why though? Uh, <laughs> I will say it's something to do with the altitude. <laughs> no, no, no. I noticed something on your Instagram interaction. Okay, why are you laughing? I don't you know. know I'm, bit, I'm, I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> I'm just a little bit nervous. I don't know, know. I don't know okay, where this is going. So I've noticed, right, that typically you comment a lot on his posts. Yeah. And it's like super Gen Z lingo. <laughs> And it's like the spelling is all off, but you get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then I realised that you don't comment as much on, on her post. So I wanted to ask, is there a reason for that? I think because when, cause my, when my brother posts, which is very rarely, he always <laughs> would ask me for advice. So oh. I kind of know what he's already going to post. So like when he posts it, I kind of feel like I'm like at a, like in a bed. I was kind of in the works of it, so I, it feels like it's like, oh, it's kind of like my post, you know? <laughs> you know? Yeah, and also because... She's making me sound so, like, incapable right now. Yeah, of, like, your post. Okay. Yeah, just, 
He's a boomer. He's like, yeah, buddy. <laughs> and there's so much that's like, hey, big boy. <laughs> there's so many of these. Like, and I'm just going, I was like, okay.